Hello, everyone. Good morning. And of course, according to your time zones, good afternoon and good evening. It's a true pleasure for me and for our team to be with you again today for a new session dedicated to the Satya Sai Education in Human Values program. For those of you who may have not seen me or met me before, my name is Suzanne, Suzanne Palermo, and I live in Switzerland and am a member of the coordinating team of this event and vice director of the Institute of Satya Sai Education of South Europe. We do hope that you are all well. And we hope that the inspiration of our last session accompanied you during these past two weeks. During that session, I'm sure you remember that we had a wonderful opportunity once again to see the lovely work that Raksha Mitani, our dear friend and coworker, is carrying out with her children at school in her capacity of teacher and human values director. And that day, we also had the chance to set into place our own project during the breakout rooms. And this was possible after just a few minutes, thanks to the very, very effective five-step method that Fabiana Larucha, our friend and coworker, also shared with us that day. And as you know, this all revolved around the three teaching approaches that pertain to the SSEHV program, the direct, indirect, and co-curricular approach. So today we will continue to see how the program can be implemented and we'll do so by delving into other compatible strategies. We will be guided through this topic by our dear friend and co-worker Verica Sekuluc Opacic who has inspired us before. Hello, dear Verica, good morning. Good morning, good morning Always to Always nice everybody. to see you. <laughs> Welcome again. And of, as we know, Verica has truly inspired us before. And so today again, she will share more of her very rich experience with us, focusing this time on the strategies that over the years she has identified and adopts when presenting, when working with SSEHV. And as usual, following her presentation, we will have some time dedicated to question and answers. So as always, please take a note of any question that may arise during the session to be ready. And then we will have a short break and come back again together for our interactive workshop. So now before um, I give the, the floor to Verica, I'd like to shortly introduce her to you once again. So Verica Sekulic Opacic was born in Belgrade, Serbia. She studied English language and literature as well as preschool education at the University of Belgrade and specialized in psychology of creativity, which is a field of knowledge that lies on the premise that everyone, every single being is gifted with creative potential. Verica has been involved with SSCHV programs for many years and received a diploma, a human values diploma, both by the Institute of Satya Sai Education in Mumbai, India in 2008, and the Institute of Satya Sai Education of South Europe in 2013, of which she is a teacher trainer. Throughout her 30 years of professional life, Verisa has worked as a preschool and English teacher, developing holistic programs related to English learning, drama workshops, creative thinking for early age children. During the war in ex-Yugoslavia from 1991 to 1999, Verisa participated in initiatives such as Smile Keepers and High Neighbor, where she offered a variety of programs connected to post-traumatic stress. During that period, she visited refugee camps and organized workshops for children and adults with the aim of per persevering the inner world of the children and their families, helping them overcome war trauma. Since 2008, Verica has been involved in various human values programs in the area of the Balkan countries, of which the most important take place in Belgrade, 
with children from the Sunshine School and in Sarajevo, Bosnia, with youth coming from deprived families affected by the wars in the former Yugoslavia. Both programs, which have been carried out for over eight years and which are still being implemented, have proved that such a side education in human values has a deep impact on the development of youth and children, bringing harmony and unity in their lives and fostering peace at a wider community level. Dear Veritza, we have had the pleasure of listening to you before and are all truly looking forward to hearing you again today. So please take over. Thank you very much. Uh, today's topic is a little bit complicated because it deals with uh, some uh, modern approaches in pedagogy and psychology, uh, which are uh, in the field of uh, potentials of uh, our, our cognitive potentials, which uh, are not uh, very often recognized in regular educational programs. And we have to find the uh, strategies which go very well with our program of educare, which is based on five human values. Uh, we already know what are the teaching techniques in the program of Educare. And uh, these five teaching techniques we had uh, a chance to hear about and to see that they are connected very deeply and in a very refined way with uh, five human cardinal values which create our moral and inner system of uh, the development and thinking. So we already know what are they, but I want to stress what are the common characteristics of all these five teaching techniques in order to find what uh, modern techniques we could include in uh, this program of human values development. Uh, we have to tell first that all these five teaching techniques are very ancient. They exist as long as the uh, human race exists. Uh, all these five aspects of uh, knowledge are not only cognitive knowledge, do, do, does not, do not give us only cognitive knowledge, but uh, they are holistic. That means that uh, they address all our capacities and uh, uh, deep inside, they touch uh, the uh, deepest parts of our soul and they have capacity to uh, help us understand and live uh, human values in our life. So this is a little bit different from a classical approach in our educational system, because in educational system, we have stress on cognitive uh, knowledge and on gaining information, which will be useful in any way in our everyday life. But uh, the author of this program, Sri Satya Sai Baba, always uh, stresses that uh, we cannot have uh, integral develop the human without uh, developing uh, his or her character. And that character is even more important than our uh, bookish uh, knowledge. Uh, what is the type of thinking we need to understand uh, human values and to understand uh, this inner development through which everybody passes through. Uh, uh, Sri Satya Sai Baba explains that we have two types of knowledge. The one knowledge is turned outwards. It is collected through our senses and it is very, uh, uh, we have a, a vast information in this field, but the other knowledge is turned inwards. This is the knowledge we gain about ourselves and we gain it through our experience. And we in uh, deep uh, in the inside of ourselves, we all have a need to develop, to mature, to do the things which will make us integrated and whole person. So when we want to build our character, we need the help of this second type of knowledge. And in this presentation, we are going to stress this second type of knowledge and to find the, try to find what are the characteristics of this uh, 
uh, knowledge. Also, this type of knowledge is connected with spiritual, with spiritual knowledge. And this is maybe controversial uh, term in modern psychology because uh, it deals with the field which is not uh, visible easily. And we have to go deep inside to understand what is spiritual knowledge. But this idea is also not a new idea. Uh, throughout the development of humans, throughout the development of us as a race, we always had this uh, uh, part of knowledge because there is no human culture nor, nor civilization without spiritual and moral concepts. And each religion uh, has these uh, spiritual and moral concepts in its base. And we can find these ideas in philosophy, visual arts, uh, literature, in any area of literature. We come to these questions which deal with our awareness. We ask ourselves, who are we? Where do we come from? What is the aim of our life? And the answer to this question is very important for our maturing and development because it brings us feeling of sense and feeling of inner fulfillment and joy. Whatever uh, we learn, we cannot be integrated persons without uh, finding the answers to these questions. Let us see. What are the um, what are the types of uh, uh, thinking which were discovered in uh, psychology? A famous American psychologist Guilford uh, found out somewhere in the middle of 20th century that we do not think only in cognitive and analytical way, and he defined two general distinctive ways of thinking which we both use and which we both need in order to be uh, integral and whole persons. The one is uh, named convergent thinking and the other is named divergent thinking. So convergent thinking is the way of thinking which is uh, developed and fostered in a educational system. It is logical, analytical, we solve problems with this way of thinking, and we, we try to find the fastest and most efficient answer to the problems of our life, to the problems of uh, scientific problems, whatever we think, we try to find one answer which is the best for, some, uh, for something. And uh, this way of thinking looks like uh, lightning. It goes very fast, very direct, and it is pointed. And it helps us to go easier through our lives because we know these uh, defined answers. But uh, when we uh, choose one uh, way how to solve one problem, then we exclude all other ways which maybe exist. So this is not the whole story. We have also ability to think uh, in a creative way and to deal with ideas which are totally new to us. So this uh, uh, convergent thinking uh, products ideas out of the things we already know. But uh, divergent thinking is an uh, ability which belongs only to humans. Convergent thinking can be very, very developed when machines are in question, computers. For example, today, when you play chess with computer, it is very difficult to, to be better because computer can, in a very, very short time, make a lot of combinations of the effects which are already known. But uh, creative thinking, it uh, deals with ideas we do not already know. And uh, it is very open. We, pro we make uh, unusual distant ideas. Uh, we come to original conclusions we did not think about before. This way of thinking is synthetic. It's lateral. We do not uh, go directly to one point, but find to try to find uh, many more solutions. And we do this with the flow of uh, created by associations. 
uh, all these ideas which appear in this way of thinking are equal. We do not have one general idea, uh, but we uh, pro produce a lot of very different ideas. And it is uh, interesting that uh, the ideas which do not come first to our mind are maybe uh, deeper and more productive than the first level of ideas. So uh, it is very important to develop also this part of uh, uh, thinking because uh, this, part, this way of thinking gives us limitless possibilities to connect so many ideas in so many unexpected ways. And this uh, ability is very, very important for us because we wouldn't survive, survive if we do not have this cognitive capacity. Uh, we can uh, very well function with cognitive thinking in the area which is known to us and which is already defined, but when things change in our life, when we have different circumstances, which we did not have before, it is very uh, important to be flexible, to have open mind, and to know how to deal with unknown situations. We had this experience uh, recently with COVID uh, infection, uh, which made us very afraid because it was totally new and we didn't know at the beginning how to deal with this totally new situation. So it is very important for us to have open mind and to create new solutions for new situations. It is also very important to understand that this uh, the, the, uh, the discovery of these other abilities of our cognitive uh, system uh, gives us, uh, widens our consciousness and uh, uh, gives us idea that we are far from reaching our highest uh, uh, peak of our uh, evolu uh, evolution. Our abilities are limitless and it is very important to, to, to open this field which is totally new to us. Uh, out of this uh, distinction between uh, holistic, uh, between the divergent and convergent uh, thinking, uh, many theories appeared, uh, and uh, the whole field uh, of holistic education uh, was created in which uh, the basic uh, presumption was that uh, first, the essence of education is not only in collecting some information, but also in developing, in growing and maturing uh, and achieving uh, our wholeness. Uh, the other very important concepts is that we do not use only our cognitive abilities to, to learn something, but we include bodily movement, emotions, artistic expression, and concrete life experiences in the process of learning. So it is very important to understand that we can uh, connect uh, five teaching techniques with the techniques which deal with this uh, different types of brain. We know today, neurologists define that uh, our brain is a very complex system and that we have uh, different functions settled in different parts of brain. We have a lot of these divisions today, very interesting because uh, they open our mind to new approaches, but maybe the most common is uh, the division to left and right uh, hemisphere of a brain. So this uh, holistic program of uh, five human values belongs to the right part of the brain as well as all these uh, 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 types of learning which uh, uh, do not uh, deal only with cognitive thinking, but with creativity, with intuition, with artistic activities, with play. We have to stress that play is not only childish activity, Play is an essential need for, for grown-ups as well, because in play, we activate ourselves in a totally new way, and we discover the things which are not uh, uh, 
present in our regular activities, everyday activities, and the things which we already learned. We repeat the things with, which we already learned, but uh, creative thinking is something more than this. In this uh, uh, context, we will today uh, uh, learn uh, about experiential learning, learning technique. This, this is also a technique uh, created by American psychologist David Kolb. It is uh, very complex and uh, it, uh, we won't go into uh, all aspects of this uh, technique, but I can tell the basic things. The first is that uh, he found out that we are, uh, while learning, in a process of learning. That means that uh, we pass through some uh, uh, phases. For example, now when you listen to me, I tell some new ideas and then you have a process. You are not only just passive listeners of the things I say, but you put uh, the information you hear from me into your uh, web of your of, of your knowledge and you put this uh, you estimate what i say and you connect this with the things you already know in this way we build this knowledge and you are very active in this uh, phase of listening and he defined these uh, phases of uh, uh, gaining uh, uh, knowledge through learning process into four phases. The one is experiencing something new. The other is reflecting. That means that we think, aha, I know this. It is a part of this or that I already know. Then we uh, uh, make new ideas, which will happen to us today in our workshop. Uh, we, we build, uh, create new ideas out of the things we uh, experienced through this uh, presentation and uh, 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 and also we act we do something with the knowledge we have this is not uh, a mechanical circle we can start the process of learning from every point each point of these four it depends on the learning style we pro we are prone to for example some people like to uh, feel things. Uh, some people like to be inspired. They cannot do the things only cognitive in a cognitive way. Some people like to try to make uh, tries and have some errors to have concrete experience with something. And uh, some people like to ponder very deeply about some ideas. So we can start from each, every point but the real process of learning uh, consists of all these four aspects. And we, uh, as we mature and as we are uh, older and older, we are capable to use all these uh, four uh, points of learning in our process of learning. So uh, this maybe looks a little bit complicated, but we can explain the same thing with the uh, old, old Chinese proverb, which says, I hear and I forget. I see and I remember. But when I do something, I understand it. So it is very, very important to have this experience to, uh, to when we have experience with ideas, then these ideas are integrated into our being on many levels, not only on a cognitive level, but on many, many levels as well. So uh, Kolb opened this field of learning in a very interesting way because he put the learner in the center of learning because of this inner process. And the teacher in this process is not the one who gives knowledge to students, but the one who is facilitator. That means that he directs children towards their inner processes and they help children learn in the best way, which is the best individually for, for the learners. The most important uh, concept of this approach is that uh, this experience we pass through while learning is transformative. That means that we change and that we uh, grow up and build ourselves through this experience. Uh, in this process of learning, 
children or learners. It can, it could be also uh, 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 it could be done with grown ups. Uh, uh, the participants have freedom of choice. They choose what is uh, best for their needs and for their inner structure. And learning is multi layered. They uh, while learning, uh, they have the impact which touches uh, many parts of their being, and we do not know what will be the final product of uh, this process of learning. So the teacher is open-minded, creative, very sensitive towards uh, his or her students, and he does not have the fixed aim which can uh, limit the, the process. Fixed theme is like a lightning. Then you exclude many things you do not think about in advance. And the most important, uh, 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 most important concept in this uh, experiential learning is that we open limitless feed of human abilities. Uh, you could hear some children in the pictures while I was uh, uh, trying to explain this different approach. These children are from the school in uh, uh, Navsari. This is Satya Sai school in which I spent uh, seven days doing this uh, very interesting uh, uh, experiential learning technique. It was the part of my uh, uh, training as a human values teacher and uh, this group of teachers uh, <clears throat> were the guests in this school and we had a chance, <coughs> so, sorry, we had a chance which was really extraordinary to see how these uh, spiritual ideas and these new approaches to, to uh, education work in practice. And it was something we will never forget. And I'm very happy to be in situation to share this experience with you uh, today. Uh, you will see how these children are shining and the way how we communicate it, not only we as the teachers with children, but children among themselves, also, the teachers of the school who were in very intense uh, connection with uh, us as guests, we created a very, very uh, strong cooperative web of uh, relationships which were all very supportive and which all made us very happy because we could meet our, each other in a very, very positive atmosphere which uh, helped us see the best part of ourselves. So this process of learning in education, in uh, experiential learning technique is holistic. It is dynamic because the whole potential of children activates. It is very authentic because it is based on personal needs, preferences. Uh, through this process of learning, inner integration happens. Uh, psychologists would say our feelings, emotions, uh, our ability to understand others, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we will stress the unity of head, heart, and hands, which is very important co concept in educare. And it is also very important the differences which appear among children are welcome. Different skills and even the children with special needs can very easily find their way, their place in a group if teacher, of course, uh, 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 takes care about it, that everybody is welcome and that everybody has something to offer to the group. When this cooperation uh, develops, then uh, the group does not have a need to compete. And this is very, for me, very important because in our schools today, children are uh, learn to compete, to be the best. It is very important for them to have the best marks, to be better than the others. And this is, uh, uh, I think uh, that uh, uh, the change of this competition will be the change of our paradigm. It is a very important concept because people live together and it is not important to be the best. It is important to be 
in a place, in a group, which is good for you, in which you can flourish, but at the same way in which you can cooperate with others and you can receive the good sides of others as well. When somebody is the best in the group, all others are behind this one, which is the best. That means that this one, the best, in some way misuses the energy of the whole group because the others are not good enough. So it is very important for us as a human race to, know, to learn how to cooperate and how to exchange what is different among ourselves. And this experiential learning technique gives us opportunity to learn this very important aspect. As well as uh, educare, it is also the same in educare programs. So these two techniques are very, very compatible. Uh, these are the kids I worked with. I was in a class of 33 uh, boys who were eight, uh, uh, who were nine years old. And I was a little bit worried when I heard that there are 33 of them in one class. I thought, how would I manage to be in contact with all of them and to create harmony? A harmonious atmosphere, but they were absolutely gorgeous. And I was really surprised to see how these children were open, how they were warm and ready to have contact with me, interested in me and my colleague. I had a colleague from Venezuela, Liliana. Uh, she spoke Spanish, I, sp I spoke Serbian, and we spoke all English, which was very different. Indian in uh, English is very different from this European style. But we were in a very intense communication with, uh, without any problems. And uh, let us now see uh, what uh, aspects of this, uh, what holistic approaches are included into uh, this process of experiential learning. The author of this approach in the school, Satya Sai School, was Dr. Pitre, the director of the Institute of Satya Sai Education in Mumbai. And he, in a very creative way, uh, combined modern knowledge from psychology and pedagogy with uh, the program of high human values. The base is, of course, uh, Satya Sai Baba's program of Educare, because the whole school is, in fact, human value school, and whatever children do there, the basic uh, approach and basic philosophy of the whole school are human uh, values. And uh, the, these children do not go home to sleep. They are in residential school. They sleep there and they spend uh, their nights and days together except holidays. So this process of integrated, uh, integrating human values into everyday life was very, very deep and intense. Uh, also in this uh, experiential learning, uh, modern uh, techniques, which are already known to us from psychology uh, and pedagogy, are used in a very original way. The first one is Howard Gardner's theory of multiple intelligences. This theory uh, deals with a uh, multitude of our uh, uh, in, uh, uh, cognitive abilities, which are not uh, recognized in the classical IQ tests. And uh, Howard Gardner, Gardner is a cognitive psychologist. He, uh, he explores a lot of uh, creative thinking. And he also uh, defined eight types of intelligence, not only cognitive and verbal intelligence, not only mathematical intelligence, which are present in our school, but, uh, but also musical intelligence, uh, um, social intelligence, uh, he calls it, call it uh, uh, intrapersonal intelligence, which uh, deals with uh, our inner thoughts and inner development. Uh, so this, uh, he, uh, it is interesting that he also defined natural intelligence, this, which is very, very unusual because uh, 
uh, he's a cognitive psychologist and he had very, very strict uh, criteria for, develop, to, for describing some types of intelligence. And he claims that we have, the, there are uh, people who deal in a very special way with our surroundings and with our uh, relationship with other living beings around ourselves. This uh, theory is very, very interesting, but we cannot go deeper into this. Just uh, let us remind ourselves that in experiential learner, learning, all these uh, the different approaches, different types of intelligence are welcome. Uh, that this is not only social theory, I will just explain in one example. For example, when we use one type of intelligence, we can use it only in one way. We cannot, for example, if we talk, now I'm talking, you are listening, and uh, why, this is a type of uh, linguistic intelligence. Uh, I cannot talk and listen at the same time because this is the same type of intelligence. I cannot uh, talk to you and listen to some program on TV because, uh, uh, it is the same and I can't do it at the same time, but I can talk and listen to the music because uh, uh, listening to music is different type of intelligence. I can talk and look at the pictures because these different types of intelligences do not collide with uh, each other. And uh, this technique of experiential learning is of course uh, the base. Uh, uh, I already explained the main principles. Uh, then uh, during this process of experiential learning, two more techniques were used. One is brainstorming, which is a well-known technique of creative thinking and mind mapping, which uh, combines uh, creative thinking with uh, convergent thinking, with organizing uh, uh, ideas into one map, but uh, this technique is also more than just convergent thinking. It uh, uses, uh, it helps us use our left, uh, left and right brain at the same time. We will see later how it looks like. Uh, okay, let us see the steps which uh, uh, are uh, present in this process of experiential learning. Uh, first step is to make uh, group coherence, to make contact with children, to do some warm-ups, warm which will uh, help children uh, be together in a good atmosphere. We can sing, we can do meditation. We can also do some games like, for example, I like very much to do name games in which we have a softball and uh, uh, throw it all around the circle and uh, we have to do something with our names. In this way, we learn names and uh, it is very playful because we sing about na our names, we shout our names, we, we whisper our names. And at the end of this activity, we just sing together. Everybody sings his own or her own na uh, name and we make a melody which belongs to the whole of the group. Uh, children like this uh, game because it is very, very playful and raises a lot of joy and positive energy. After that, a topic is given and uh, then we uh, do brainstorming, giving, uh, producing a lot of ideas according to this topic. Then we organize a lot of ideas into mind mapping and then in the step five, which is most complex, we uh, do one common mind map out of uh, uh, several maps which are created in smaller groups. And then children have the task to do something with uh, the topic they have chosen. I will show you later how this uh, process goes concretely. When we finish this process, then we do pre-presentations uh, in front of the whole group. And the, the final step is to present what we have created in public, in front of others which are, who are important to us. So let us see now how this process goes 
concrete lame. First, uh, 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 I explained what we can do in these uh, uh, warm ups, but uh, uh, I want to stress something which really surprised me, and that is that uh, these children were very, very interested about uh, us as teachers, about our countries, about our languages, and they asked us to write uh, the names for human values in. Uh, uh, Spanish and in Serbian. They wrote it in uh, uh, Sanskrit and the last uh, uh, column is uh, Gujarati. And believe it or not, they all opened their notebooks and wrote down the words in our languages and they wanted to learn them because it was very interesting to them to, to know something which is uh, wider than their own language. It was really, really nice. And I felt so accepted and uh, uh, they were so interested in me. And that was my task as a teacher to be interested in them. So I was really, really surprised in a beautiful way. So the second uh, phase is to put uh, the topic, uh, to put the initial team. We are going to deal about in the next seven days. The teacher chooses this initial, initial team. It is very important to choose something which is uh, uh, of interest for children, which will uh, foster vivid discussions and which can be connected easily with uh, the knowledge they already have. And um, it is very important not to give them to too general ideas because general ideas will not provoke them to think and to give their own words. The words which are given are uh, nouns because uh, it is much more easier to deal with nouns later. When we give this initial team, then brainstorming uh, uh, is the next phase in this uh, phase. We, uh, the, the author of this uh, technique is uh, Osborne. He is also a psychologist, American, and he uh, uh, created a technique which will help us generate a lot of ideas, which will encourage uh, participants uh, to, to give the ideas which were not on the surface of our thinking. And uh, this is the technique which unlocks the potentials of our brain. It is uh, based on intuition and on association. This is the way how thoughts are uh, spread in our uh, br brain. We have neurons and these neurons are like centers from which the energy goes like in a, uh, this uh, uh, picture of a tree or a flower, the, the ideas right radiates around this initial, initial idea. Uh, the children uh, uh, will give their ideas and you have a task to put all these ideas on the board without any estimation. In this first phase, we do not estimate ideas. All ideas are equal. And we will uh, see how the blackboard looks like when we do this type of brainstorming. It is full of words. Uh, all words are accepted. We do not limit children. We do not criticize, estimate. Uh, and uh, all children participate. And it is also important for them to write the, these words in their notebooks as well, because they can then use these words in a later stages of work. Now, then after this brainstorming, we do mind mapping. This is also one technique uh, created by Tony Buzan. It is also American. So all these uh, psychologists are Americans. This is very interesting because they deal a lot with uh, creative thinking. So in this uh, uh, phase, we add logic. The ideas are initiated through brainstorming and then we organize them in maps and we go from general and uh, abstract to more specific and concrete ideas. And this uh, technique uh, 
combines left and right uh, uh, parts of the brain because we do not think in linear way as our textbooks are, for example, organized. We think in a way which goes to different, different uh, 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 sides uh, in a ra radiant way. So their task is in this uh, uh, phase to find, to group all these words uh, into categories which have something uh, in common. And when they group these words, they do this in smaller groups, then they have to find the general word in these groups of words, which will be the leading point of uh, uh, specific uh, words of groups. Uh, this is very, very creative process, and it also needs a lot of asks for a lot of co cooperation, and it can be it can bring a lot of joy among the participants. Uh, when we do this, when then we uh, gather again all together, and then we present our uh, maps. Our my children were. Uh, divided into six groups, and we had uh, uh, six uh, uh, branches of this uh, uh, mind map. Uh, they present their groups, and then they go, they, uh, we decide what are the same groups they found out, and we make a general uh, mind map, which, is, which consists of the same uh, uh, categories, and also we can add something which is maybe everybody finds very interesting, but was not included in all common uh, maps. Uh, when while they were presenting these maps, they used to go in group in front of the board. I was very surprised. I asked them why do they come all, the whole group. It is enough for one person to come out and to explain, but they said, we want to support him. So it was very important for them to have this, uh, to be present in, in all together in all the phases of our work. When we uh, create this uh, uh, general picture, then we put this general picture on the board and children decide again, which group of activities, which category suits them the most. It is totally free for them to decide. Teacher maybe helps if somebody is confused and cannot choose, but uh, 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 it is not a teacher's task to decide. Teacher do not decide. He just facilitates the process. Uh, in this class, we had uh, uh, I think also maybe eight categories because the class was uh, big. But uh, when we, if we have a group of 10 children, it is enough to make two or three uh, categories. OK, we can now see the general uh, mind map, which was uh, at the end. Uh, before that, I just wanted to stress uh, that the uh, teacher is not the one who who is too directive, but uh, he helps uh, children to find their own way. His main task is to create positive atmosphere, to recognize the potentials of children and help them uh, find what is the easiest and the most beautiful way for them to express themselves. He does not give uh, the questions which are the, the answers which are finished, but raise this question which will open the field of their thinking. It is very important to offer children security. That means that uh, uh, children feel safe to express themselves without fear of being rejected or criticized. Then when children express themselves, he's the one who will unite all that is created into a common and integral picture. And it is very important uh, for teacher to celebrate what is done, what is created to, to give a, not only positive uh, uh, reaction, but to be really happy with what children created. It is easy because uh, creative process is very, very 
attractive and it, it, it is overwhelming for all of us. Okay, so let us see how to finish. Uh, yes, in this phase, the, when they choose uh, one of the groups, then they have, uh, this is the most creative part of experiential learning, they now are in position to uh, create something out of the category they like the most. They are free to use all resources they have to combine them, to combine their knowledge and skills and make some products, some outcomes. Those outcomes can be drawings, dramatizations, poems, scientific activities, research on different cultures, art activities, whatever they find attractive and they want to, to explore. Uh, throughout this process, the, this general mind map is on the board because it is something which uh, integrates uh, them. Uh, they have to understand that they are part of this whole process of this one mind map. Okay, let us go on. Uh, the, through this process of creativity, obvious ideas come first. And then if we give enough time to, to children, more creative ideas follow later. So children need a lot of mental and social skills in this process. They need the ability to analyze, to synthesize, to understand different points of view, to cooperate in a group, to give accept uh, suggestions, to show respect and acceptance to each other. And the giving enough time is very important. This happens also in this uh, uh, group because they had the best ideas uh, later when they said that they need uh, more time and they wanted to come uh, in the afternoon out of our regular classes to develop their ideas. So this process, of creative process of producing a lot of new material was really enchanting and they were not uh, tired to do it uh, uh, much more than it was uh, prescribed from our our organizers. And uh, then when they create uh, these uh, um, products or outcomes, then we uh, gather again uh, in the whole group, in the whole classroom, and then we show each other what we created. This is the final mind map, but I went further. So let us continue with uh, uh, pre-presentations. We again, uh, uh, so this is the flow. I wrote this beautiful word, the flow, because the flow is something which carries us uh, through the creative process. You can hear them here presenting me some poems all together. One is reading, the all others are here to, to support this person who is reading. And here, this small group is in front of uh, the classroom in the afternoon, trying to develop their ideas. Uh, further. And then these pre-presentations are done in front of, oh, yes, this is a very important aspect. It is well known from pedagogy, uh, uh, named enrich, Enriched Environment. Enriched Environment is created by synergy of safety and freedom. First, children have to feel safe to express themselves, and then they are free to do it. And this enriched environment uh, is uh, done by people. So the teacher is uh, here in a very, very important uh, role to, to help children feel like this. And But I wanted to show you that uh, it doesn't have to be chaotic. This, is, uh, this picture is from the afternoon activities where children uh, came, to, uh, came to do more, but uh, they very uh, made the order with their things before entering the classroom. I was totally surprised. I couldn't believe my eyes that uh, they cared about this order. They also cared about each other in the same, same way. So these pre-presentations were the phase in which uh, all other hear what we uh, what some group created, and then they had uh, gave their feedback. They uh, uh, 
maybe change something and uh, they help each other to finalize their presentation. So what were their outcomes? Six poems, a beautiful quiz, quiz on machines, a detailed presentation about the human body and its functions, a poster with stars and planets. So my topic was technology. I offered them technology because I know that this is very interesting topic for boys of their age. But I was very surprised to see how these children, which are educated in human values, care about the environment, about the whole picture of our world, about uh, the use of machines in a way that people can be healthy, etc. They were not interested in technology as some uh, devices for amusement. When we finish this pre-presentation, we go to the final phase. This final phase is in front of uh, the whole of the school, in front of all children, as well as uh, uh, elders who were invited as guests. Before that, I was so touched with their industriousness and readiness to uh, work uh, together with us and with their interest for us as teachers. And uh, we teachers decided to make some kind of blessings for them. Since they live in a Gujarat, they have never seen snowflakes. So we did uh, some cards with uh, snowflakes and we wrote inside of these cards blessings in English, Spanish and Serbian Chirilits and uh, we gave them, uh, they were very personal. Every card had the name of this, uh, of a, uh, a child from a group. And I gave them these, uh, we gave them these uh, cards one day and they were so delighted and so touched that uh, they didn't know how to express their gratitude. First they all came to give me a little uh, stickers they collected uh, from their notebooks. They gave me a lot of Satya Sai's pictures, a lot of pictures of nature, of some interesting things for them. Then all of a sudden, all of 30, 33 of them uh, stood in a line to touch my feet. And I was really, really taken aback. I couldn't accept it at the beginning because it was too much for me in our culture to touch somebody's feet is uh, uh, something which has connotation of uh, humility or something like this. But they were so shining and they were so happy to do it that uh, they really opened my heart in a very, very uh surprising way and i was i think that this uh these 15 minutes changed uh, my life and my position as a teacher i went back to my country with totally different uh psychological structure structure from the inside i was never respected in this way and i uh, understood that uh, uh, love does not have anything with uh, power and the uh, relationships in which one person is powerful and the others are not. So this that was a very transformational experience for myself as a teacher. Final presentation was very, very uh, significant. The whole of the school was full of children. Uh, they all came to see their, uh, their uh, uh, comrades and at the back of the this big hall they were we were there as teachers and also very important guests from the outer surroundings together with the director and special guests and uh, we made invitation cards for everybody we thought uh, that it was important their parents for example to be present and uh, this experience to show yourself in front of the others in a positive and uh, creative way uh, builds a lot of self-confidence and uh, builds uh, a lot of uh, um, positive connections between children and elders. And to, to finalize with uh, some general conclusions, uh, what were the outcomes of this uh, experiential learning 
learning experience in this uh, context of Satya Sai school. Everyone participated in their own way. In this school, we had this general presentation in front of the others, but we could also make smaller groups at the same time. And then the guests could walk around and see what is going on in these smaller groups. It is very important for us to be seen, for the elders as well, and particularly for children to be seen in this uh, uh, situation of our good achievement, achievements. And the, I will finish with the conclusion which, uh, ah, yes, I put uh, two poems which out of six, just to show you how creative they were. The first poem deal, uh, dealt with uh, the human position in the galaxy. And it says, there is a heart in a man and the man in a village, and the village in a town, and the town in a state, and the state in a country, and the country on the earth, and the earth in the solar system, and the solar system in galaxy, and the galaxy has never been seen. It is very poetic how they put a human being in this context of the universe. And the second uh, poem deals uh, with uh, the importance of uh, planting trees. And it says, a grandmother once said, blessed is the house upon whose walls the shade of an old tree softly falls. We had no tree near our cottage, so I planted one last spring. It's six moons old now and growing fast. In six years time, there be a blessing of sigh. This beautiful, uh, poem also shows that we have to do something with the things we know. I will finish with conclusion about us as teachers. Yes, uh, after these uh, presentations, we had cultural program, which was really amazing with all this bursting energy of uh, children showing the folk dances uh, uh, from various parts of India. We met in a joy and we also were astounded with this creativity they showed. And the final conclusion is that uh, this technique of experiential learning transforms the children pass through the process which made them grow and be uh, more mature. They will never forget what they learned through this process. They uh, experiences the world, they experience the world as a unique whole, and we they were the part of this unique whole. And they learned also this is a metacognition of about themselves uh, present. They learned a lot about themselves, about their abilities to be creative, to show their uniqueness, and their abilities to find a good place in every working group. And uh, also we as a, a teachers also pass through transformative experience. We grew as professionals and human beings, mutual respect between us, uh, elders and elders and elders and children enabled us to offer something unique. The relationship between us and children was exceptional because it was based on the right balance of authority and closeness. Children were not afraid of us. They were open and warm and interested. And at the same time, they respected us as their teachers. And this uh, positive atmosphere helped us uh, ha uh, to be in cooperation all together, which constantly flowered throughout these days we spent together. And I realized at the end of this process that we have a feeling of pride when we belong to a group which is in cohesion uh, through good actions. Then we are proud of our group, of our school, of our town, nation, country, when we do good actions which deal with uh, the whole, with the uh, society as a whole. We carried all our experiences to our countries and uh, our work in our, with our children in our countries is enriched with this 
uh, extraordinary experience from Satya Sai School. At the end, I put the picture in which we were together with our colleagues from Satya Sai School. Uh, they supported us very much all the time. We all had have one angel teacher who cared about us and our needs. And uh, also I want to stress that the discipline between teacher was, teachers were extraordinary. And I realized that the atmosphere in the school is normally uh, uh, connected with a lot of discipline because these teachers were the examples of human values. And I want to thank to I, I still have this feeling of gratitude towards this school, which uh, helped us uh, uh, see how these complicated ideas, which are uh, part of modern psychology and pedagogy, work in practice. They work in practice very well because they were connected with human values. Thank you very much. That was my presentation. Dear Verita, thank you so much for this amazing presentation. I can understand how grateful you are for your experience. And we are also very, very grateful for you to having shared it with us today and for such a wonderful synthesis and overview of experiential learning technique. I really, I will personally go back to our recording, take advantage of our recording. I invite everyone to do the same because there is so much to, to grasp from what you have just presented. So we have gone a little bit overboard with respect yes. to our uh, schedule. Uh, so uh, we would like to invite everyone to send your eventual questions to us as we have done previously. And Verisa will have all the time to answer you. Of course. And that's no problem at all, absolutely. And uh, we will have now a short five minute break and get back to you in a, in a short while, please bring a piece of paper and a pencil with you because you will need it. So thank you very much. We'll see you in five minutes. So hello everyone again, welcome back. And it's time for our workshop. So today our workshop will revolve around something that brings us great joy, something very special. Because today, together with all of you, the Institute of Satya Sai Education of South Europe is formally launching a new project. And the project that you will see today, of course, that we invite you to participate in and to share with others is dedicated to the value of peace and is another strategy and example of what can be done to promote human values in our families and communities. So I will now introduce the project to you and after um, Elena Rodriguez, our dear friend and coworker, will guide us through the workshop. So just one second, I will uh, share my screen. Um, just to be sure, do you see my screen? Sorry? Yes, we do. Okay, thank you, thank you. So I have unveiled the title of our project. As you see, it is called Peace Friends. And the project is a virtual walk for peace. We will see that there are a few components connected to it, but basically the initial part especially is a virtual walk for peace. So what does this mean? Why is it a virtual walk? Because we will not be walking physically. We will not be walking ourselves, but we will walk along this peace walk thanks to a series of characters that each of us will prepare and each character will represent a human value. And these characters will be walking on our behalf. So let's see exactly what this means. And as we proceed, I'd like to first uh, put the project into context. 
Now, over the years working in the field, the editorial field as a project designer for children's uh, books and um, as an illustrator, I have really seen over and over how a project uh, represents a thread and a container. A project always offers us a thread to follow, a process to follow. And it's really like having a thread, a needle and a thread that we can connect various other activities to the same project, to the same topic and focus. So projects become something very complete and very, um, very full of, of many, many steps that make them um, very creative and entertaining for children. And they can last a long time. And because of this, they are also containers. We can connect a variety of material and activities and lessons to the same project, to the same process. And which means that we can, of course, connect, in our case, all three teaching approaches, if we wish to do so, the direct, the indirect, and the co-curricular. And naturally, as we have just seen with Veritza, we can use other experiential learning approaches to help the children really go within, grasp the meaning of the values, bring them out, and enhance their process of understanding and of grasping, especially meaning, adding meaning to their lives. And we saw during our last presentation, our last session, that we do need three basic things when it comes to creating a project, intuition, creativity, and method. We said that intuition is really what springs forth, what comes forth. It's like an inner heartfelt inspiration that prompts us to do something and we need to allow our creativity to flow so we can find a shape, give a shape to this inspiration. And we also need a method because this method helps us structure all of this into our project. And naturally we need a focus and a goal. So we have said that our focus is peace. And I have, as you see, you may recognize this, I am using today the the very effective model to design a project that Fabiana shared with us uh, two weeks ago, because this will help us explain and describe the project to you. So who is the project Peace Friends for? Now, Peace Friends is for everyone, for children from ages zero to 99. It is really anyone can participate in it. I like to call it a family project because the whole family can take part in it. And really you will see by the examples that we will show you shortly that young adults, adults, elderly, and of course children can all take part in it. And what is the goal that we would like to achieve through this project? Now, Peace Friends, of course, this is implicit in its name, wishes to foster unity and friendship. And as we go through the process, as we follow the thread and the steps, we, of course, will gradually contribute to building awareness for the need of human values and their shared practice. And what benefits will be created by Peace Friends? We feel that working with peace, and we know this, will of course foster inner peace, right human relations, and harmony. But there are many, many more values, human values that will be elicited and brought forth through this project. And how will we carry it out? Now, we will implement Peace Friends, we could say in three steps, and then we will see as it evolves naturally. But the very first step, as I said at the beginning, the very first step is a virtual peace walk. And we will come to this shortly. So what social impact could a similar project have? We feel that the impact of this project could be good, could be effective because it does reach out to the global, our global community. And it will also let's say travel and be shared through the world wide web. Now, very quickly, I'd like to also show you, describe or, or illustrate, explain our logo. As you see, we are, we are using the five uh, petal flower that is also part of the Institute logo. And we know that each petal contains one of the five human values. So truth, right action, peace, love 
and nonviolence. And we have heard also when talking about character, the cultivation of character, how when our character blossoms, of course, the flower opens. And Satya Sai says that character is the fragrance of the flower. So these human values represent the essence of our true being, which is, of course, the love, which we know is the undercurrent of all values. And then in our, on our logo, we have also chosen to use a diamond because we're talking about peace. We will be working with peace. And the symbol of the diamond is very, very helpful because we can explain very effectively to children and to everyone actually, that we need to foster uh, peace. We need to build bridges. We need to connect our outer diversity, our outer perspectives, our differences, our different knowledge and know-how, bring it all together. And thanks to these bridges, combine our know-how and work for common purpose, which of course is our focus and goal. So on the flyer that you will receive during the next week, it says, Peace Friends is a virtual peace walk to raise awareness about the need to promote peace in our homes, at school, at the workplace, in all countries and everywhere in the world. But walking is not enough and talking is not enough either. If we want peace to prevail, we need to practice human values. We need to foster human values. We need to share them and bring them to life. So this is why the colorful characters partaking in this unique peace walk will represent our commitment to march through life by practicing at least one human value. I'd like to read this again. This is why the colorful characters partaking in this unique peace walk will represent our commitment to, walk, to march through life by practicing at least one human value. And as we do so, we will become peace friends and spread peace together. So how do we participate? What do we need? First of all, we need a character model template. We need to prepare our character that will walk on our behalf. So we have basically two model templates, one for children, a child template. Here it is, looks like this, and one adult template. This is just to stress that anyone can participate, but an adult can of course prepare a child uh, character and vice versa. So there is no obligation in that. And of course, we need a lot of creative material, anything that you can think of that you would like to use to personalize your character because we do need to personalize it. So how do we start? We start by cutting out, here it is again, our model sheet. And this is how our character comes out. It's very important to leave the outer gray edges. First of all, because children, um, not only children, it can be difficult for anyone actually to cut out so nicely the fingers of the hand. So the outer edge makes it much easier for them and the character comes out very nicely, very neatly. And it is proven also that it gives extra support to the character. And um, then what do we do? Sorry, my PC is not working. Okay, then we give our character personality. We can begin by drawing our character and then we dress it up. We add paper and color. We can do anything we want. And then we have a lot of templates. You can find, you will find everything on our website. And these templates can be very helpful to, uh, to prepare your character. I have uh, both adults and children have used them. And we can also use recycled paper for example, using our templates, let's say you have some Christmas wrapping that you like very much that you set aside and didn't throw out. So you can use the templates or use it, of course, also according to your own fantasy and trace the template on the paper 
And then there it is, our character with a beautiful red dress. And here she is. So as you see, this uh, character is carrying a sign with a human value, joy. Because one of the most important, maybe the most important part of this project is that as we prepare our characters, we talk about the value of peace. We work together, we share our feelings, we add anything to this thread to enhance our understanding of peace. And of course, we ask ourselves, which values do we need to create peace? And here we can have a little bit of like a brainstorm that Berisa was just talking to us about. So all the values come forth, sharing, respect, contentment, patience, trust, happiness, understanding, cooperation, humility, friendship, and of course, love, the undercurrent of all the values. And as we are working on our characters, sharing the values, exploring the values more in depth, maybe with a side activity for teachers or parents who would like to deepen the process, then we, at a certain point, we listen to our heart because we need to go within each one of us and choose one value, the value that we deeply feel is the most important for peace. The value that we need, we feel that needs to be practiced if we want peace to prevail. And then what do we do? We add our value to our character. So now our character will represent this value that we have chosen that really tuned in with us and that we want to represent during the virtual peace walk. When your character is ready, we invite you to put the character on a dark, event, preferably a colored background, and then take its picture. And you can send it to us at this link that we will later share with you through the chat. And don't forget to put the value on because characters, if we receive characters without the value, they will be sent back. So you can use pencils, markers, and paints, recycled paper, you can prepare a kite or a balloon or a sign for your value, or of course you can add the value on a t-shirt, on a hat. This is up to you, entirely up to you. And as we said at the beginning, anyone can participate. Every, actually, everyone must participate because we need everyone to walk for peace. We need that. We need everyone to work for human values by practicing them and sharing them and, and sharing also this opportunity to walk together. So these three samples uh, actually were made by adults. They did use the adult uh, character model template. And the, um, the one in the middle that corresponds to the, to the value of will, goodwill, was actually made by a 91 year old lady who comes to visit us at uh, our open space because we tested this project here. And she sat down and made two, actually two characters. And she chose value, the value of will. We need good will if we want peace to prevail. And the character dressed in black is a character that was created with many others by a, a mentally challenged lady who also visits, visits us from time to time. And she fell in love with this chance to prepare characters with a value and she made many. And this character is, um, of course, as you see, has buttons and she used fabric and she chose the word poetry. And that I, I find that so, so touching and beautiful and so necessary in our world. And the character on the right that you see has, has used the, one of our templates, the beard, it was actually uh, brought to us by an, a young adult. And uh, you don't see it very well, but over the head of the character, she left some paper and wrote in wisdom. So, but the second step of this virtual walk for peace um, is this. When you send your character to us, we will send you a peace friend identity card. And here it is. This is the peace friend identity card. And in the back, 
there is the logo of the Institute and it says, I'm a citizen not of Athens or Greece, but of the world. This is a quote by Socrates. And then it says, we are building peace by being friends. May our hearts beat as one. We have our logo and inside it is a little bit like a passport. So the child or the receiver will receive it and add in the details. And it says country planet, and there is a date of issue, a card number, and the date of expiry says valued, valid for a lifetime. The most important part of this uh, identity card is what it says inside. And it says, this identity card certifies that the holder is a member of the world community of peace friends and recognizes and respects the universal human values of truth, right action, peace, love, and nonviolence in thought, word, and deed. So I will read it again. This identity card certifies that the holder is a member of the world community of peace friends and recognizes and respects the universal human values of truth, right action, peace, love and nonviolence in thought, word, and deed. And of course, once reading this, after reading this, we sign this card. There's a place for our picture and may all beings in the world be happy. So to sum up, we, this project that contains these, let's say three steps. We begin with a virtual peace walk and characters that we ourselves will prepare will walk on our behalf. And once we send our characters to the Institute, you will receive a Peace Friends, Peace Friend Identity Card. And then we will become Peace Friends. And so our network will stay connected and foster peace together. And please don't forget to add the human value to your character. So here are a few more examples. And this is a rhyme that the characters uh, say that, can, that um, has become part of this project. We are walking for peace and know it's an art. We can build it together if we're friends in our heart. And oh yes, of course, our peace walk begins on June 15th. What does this mean? This means that our Institute will begin to upload the characters we receive and we will inform you shortly before, and starting June 15, they will be visible on our website. So I'm ending with this slide where we have the links, the direct link to our website. So you can go uh, immediately already today, eventually, to download your character model template and the link where you can send your character to. And on our website, you will find the flyer. You will find a series of character model templates you will find a full list of the five human values and related values that can be very helpful during this project. And you will find some information on the Priest Friends Identity Card. And at a later stage, you will find there will be a link, a connection to view our walk for peace. So thank you very much for your attention. And I'd like to now ask Elena, to step in and take over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, dear Suzanne. It's amazing, this uh, invitation initiative, this creativity, uh, serving the, the ideal. And what we really need to do is uh, to nurture, cultivate, and preserve peace all around in every environment. So this is amazing what you have heard, prepared. I really, I'm really thankful and I hope that everyone is very happy too. So thank you very much for, for presenting it so well and then inviting us to join and to work hand in hand in this amazing new experience of a virtual work, work uh, worldwide. It's amazing, really. So now I'm going to present the workshop our workshop today, uh, well, this is our proposal. What is our proposal for today? You can guess, maybe you can imagine. 
what we're going to do now is to first of all to have like a warming up experience to to start uh, feeling what is going to be like participating in the peace work that Dan has uh, invented with the inspiration of course of the program of Satya Sai Care, which is always giving us opportunities to develop and manifest practical ways of experiencing all these uh, values that we all have inside, but we need to express them, of course, outside. So then um, our first uh, stage in this, in this workshop is going to be to tune in, as we know, that we have always uh, advised. Uh, it's the first step of every every mm -hmm. session in Human Values. It's like tuning in with our inner heart, with our heart inside, with a spiritual heart. So we we invite you all to to uh, place a uh, sit down with your. Uh, back straight without tensions, place your laps, place your hand on your lap. And then if you are on a chair, to keep your legs parallel and then place your feet on the floor. If you are sitting on another place on a cushion, just choose the position of your legs if you want to like the picture, curved legs, if you are on the floor, whatever. And then the important thing is that you pay attention to your breathing with your eyes closed, silent for one minute. Okay, and I will play a few notes on the flute when the minute is over. So now we are going to close. Now I I hope that you are. Can you hear me well? Yes, dear Elena. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Jordi. So now I'm going. We are going to. I'm going to explain the tasks that we are going to do in the breakout rooms. So we are going to first uh, in each room. We are going to first have a discussion and sharing of our feelings and experience with the help of. These two questions. First question is, which values do we need to create peace? And second question, what does being a peace friend imply? First, we discuss a little bit about this. Then we have to create a group, one group peace friend character. We have to invent the, the the, the character. One of you, one of the persons in the group, take this responsibility or this, or this, or, or this task to draw a peace friend character. That no, uh, better if he, he is walking you know, or she is walking in the position of walking. Then select the value that you that your group character will represent and write it on your character. After the discussion, you select the value and you have to write it on the character. And then each room will dedicate its peace friend character to a different age group. In the following uh, slide, we are going to distribute the ages and the groups. So in group one, you need to, to draw a character of a person up to eight years old. In group two, from nine to 12 years old. Group three, from 13 to 19, the 13 ages. 
groups four from 20 to 35 young adults, group five from 36 to 64, the mature adults people, and the people of group six will draw a character of uh, people from 65 and above. So you have to be very creative and very free also to draw these people that will join in their work with uh, friends. Um, just to warm up and to learn a little bit how we experience the project. So this is the, the, the task. These are the tasks. You will have 15 minutes and remember your room number because after this, we will come back and show our pictures to the plenary with the value that we have chosen. So. And then, uh, well, I, we can feel the joy of everybody, the joy of finding ourselves uh, in these uh, characters and showing our best, the best we can do anytime. So this is it. This is uh, the, we can start then finding the feeling that this project is giving us now. So I'm going to invite now uh, Suzanne again. So that so, is thank, so. thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you, Elena, for having guided, guided this workshop so nicely. And thank everyone. Thank you all for these wonderful characters. Uh, just uh, it, it is it is so heartwarming to see them and to see what they can actually put into how the process can be initiated, initiated like this. So it's just wonderful. And uh, I'd, of course, like to thank, uh, we are ending, we are towards the end, I'm a few minutes late, but I'd like to really invite Verica, thanking you again, dear Verica, for your um, intervention, your presentation, and ask you if you would like to see, say a few final words to us. Thank you, Suzanne, and thank all of you for listening to me. We all together make this a field. Uh, some persons talk, some persons listen, but we are all together in this process. And I would like to invite all of you to be creative, to be open-minded, to let love uh, flowers in your heart, no matter what our circumstances at the moment are. We can always be in this field of creativity and love. Thank you. Thank you so much, Verica. These are very wise words also, very, very wise. Thank you so much. And of course, uh, we will be meeting again in two weeks, which will be Saturday, 4th June, for the final sum up of module two. And we are looking very much forward to this. And during the next few days, during our next uh, communication, you will receive the information that we have given today about this project, also by email. And as we have already given you also the direct link, you can also go and look at it again today if you wish to do so. So thank you all so much. It's been a wonderful chance to be get back together again. And we wish you two lovely weeks before we see each other again. So thank you and goodbye. Bye-bye. And don't forget, uh, Susanne, to say that we will close with this uh, beautiful uh, song and video that... Uh, the, um, we watched in another session, uh, which is a wonderful prayer for peace and happiness. Samasta Loka Sukino Bhavantu. Let's enjoy this. Let's connect uh, through our hearts and uh, spread this energy of peace and happiness to all beings in the world. Samasta Loka Sukino Bhavantu. Just stay five more minutes to close in a prayer all together and to unite uh, our hearts.
Bye.